Hey there, my friends, Hank here. Today, we're gonna to answer one of the most common questions I get about scale modeling here on the channel. And that is, what is the best way to paint and weather up a set of scale model tank tracks? And this can be an intimidating part of a model build because you wanna get it just right. So in this video, I'll show you my simple formula for making realistic looking tracks every time. For today's demonstration, I'll be using these great aftermarket T34 tracks from Tankcraft. But these techniques are going to work for rubber band tracks, link and length tracks, pretty much whatever you're working with on your particular build, so no worries. So the first thing we're going to do here, as always, is give ourselves a nice base to work with. We're going to spray both of our tracks with a good coat of black primer. Once that step is complete, we're going to move on to one of the oldest tricks in the scale modeling handbook, and that is dry brushing. What we're going to do here is take a nice stiff bristled brush, we're gonna load it up with some of this white aluminum paint, and then we're gonna wipe nearly all of it off on a paper towel. That's gonna leave just a little bit of paint on our brush, and we're gonna gently run that over the surface of our tracks. And what that's gonna do is highlight just the raised areas of our tracks here, the parts that would come in contact with the hard ground and expose that metal. On the inside of the tracks, we're gonna do this same dry brushing on the areas closest to the track teeth. This is where the tracks would come in contact with the drive sprocket and the idler wheel of a T34 in this particular case. And as a general rule of thumb, always do a little research on your vehicle before you paint up the tracks and keep a few things in mind. Does your tank have metal tracks or does it have tracks with rubber pads? What surfaces of your tracks would come in contact with the ground? And what surfaces would come in contact with the tank's road wheels? Take into account how the tracks would behave in real life, and it's gonna help you make smart decisions about how to weather your scale model version and make it as realistic as possible. All right, now that we're all dry brushed up, we're gonna add our first bit of dirt, quote unquote here, to our tracks. We'll use this acrylic product called Oiled Earth, and we're simply gonna brush a light coat of this all over our tracks. Once that dries up, it's gonna leave us with just a hint of grime on the tracks and help break up all that stark black primer. Now we're gonna move on to some enamel products. So to protect all of the paintwork that we've done so far, let's spray our tracks with a coat of gloss varnish to lock all that in and give us a nice, strong, clear coat. For my main track weathering work, I love to use pigments. These are essentially artificial dirt powder, and I think that they're best for tank tracks because they behave just like the real thing. If we want to make dirty looking scale model tracks, use dirt. Well, fake dirt. But these pigments will settle and cling to our tracks just like actual dust and dirt would on a real life vehicle. I like this line from Ammo. It comes in all sorts of shades and different colors. I'm going to start out with some Russian earth pigment because we're working on a T34. And I'm just going to brush this all over my tracks. Be sure to have a mat or something down because this is going to make a bit of a mess. Just work slowly and hit the front and back of every track link. Nothing fancy here, we're just getting some dirt on there. Once we got some of that Russian earth on all of our tank tracks, we're gonna grab another pigment to add some variation. Not all dirt is alike, my friends. Our tank is traveling lots of ground. Some is dry, some is wet, some might have a little bit of clay, etc. I like to use a lighter pigment for my second round of pigment work. So here I've got some Europe earth going. And we're just going to add a bit of this randomly along our tracks. This breaks up all that dark dirt, and you can already see it looks more authentic. Okay, so once we're happy with our accumulated dirt, we're going to do a quick trick to help get this pigment to stick to our tracks. We're going to gently brush each link with a bit of enamel thinner. And this is going to act as sort of a poor man's pigment binder. They do make products specifically for this purpose, but you know what? Thinner works. I have some already, and that's what we're going to use. All about making things user-friendly on this channel. Now, it's going to take a while for this enamel to dry out from our pigment, so unfortunately, we've got to walk away for a while. I'd recommend at least overnight. Go outside, take a walk, watch some other Spruce and Bruise videos. Whatever works for you. All right, so we've let our pigments dry overnight, and now we just need to do a little cleanup. I use a stiff bristle brush and knock off as much or as little of that remaining pigment as I feel like. This is totally up to you. I like to get quite a bit off personally because then there's a little less mess to handle. And if I decide to use this vehicle in a diorama down the road, I can always add more dust and mud effects to match whatever environment I'm going for. 
This is just a nice base level of weathering. And just like that, you've got yourself a realistic looking set of tank tracks. Not too bad, right? All that's left is to get them on our tank. But I think this needs just a little bit of weathering himself first. Stay tuned for my next video on how to weather up your vehicles themselves. And until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.